Hey, Kelly, how are you? I'm great, Bo. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Have you heard about Anchor? You mean that big, heavy thing that you throw off the side of a boat? No, silly. The podcast app that helps you distribute your podcast episodes to a bunch of major websites. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah, it's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Ooh, I love less work. That sounds fantastic. And you can even make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Ooh, I also love to make money. Yeah, so just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Do it. Do it. going everyone this is precisely podcast a podcast about beer and video games i'm your host Bo, and with me as always my tale to your sonic how are you kelly oh, i'm great thanks Bo. how are you i am doing very well thank you uh let me introduce one of our biggest supporters of precisely a collector of the obscure and the games less talked about a man that speaks many languages and the farthest away guest we have had on the cast, Marcus, a.k.a. Mackin underscore Retro Gamer. How are you doing, sir? Jag mår alldeles utmärkt. Hello. That was Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Swedish for what? Uh, I'm perfectly fine. Thank you. Oh. Awesome. Oh, man. It's good to hear from you. We've been Instagram buddies for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just have seen... You grow uh, visually with the games that you're playing. You've introduced me to games that I've been wanting to play um, and that I have played. You get me thinking more about shmups all the time. <laughs> so, yeah, man, it's it's good to hear from you, especially so far away. You're six hours ahead of us right now. Yeah, it's uh, eight o'clock here soon. So, And we're going to be drinking early here. Because it's yeah. uh, 2 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, but that's it's Saturday. Fine. <laughs> yeah, I was just telling you guys earlier, found a stray dog. And man, it just like got me all wrecked today, like not knowing what to do. And, you know, I was just like, oh, my gosh, podcast today. Thank God I can crack open a beer at two without my wife being angry at me. <laughs> 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 Perfect. <laughs> so talking about beer, uh, let's get into that. What are you guys drinking on? Kelly, do you want to start? Sure thing. Ooh, awesome. Just cracked it um, a little aggressively there. Um, <laughs> so I actually have the one that you gave me for Christmas, um, the Bent oh. Water Brewing Double Thunder Funk Double IPA. Oh, nice. Um, I was like super excited about this because the, the art is super weird. It's like two gorillas fighting, but it's like neon pink and neon blue with like outlines of yellow. I don't know. It just makes me kind of want to drink it more. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of the sock and bopper robots sort of, but yeah. as gorillas. Yeah, you know? kind of. I can see that. Um, it says it's brewed with two row and crystal malt and aggressively hopped with mosaic Simcoe and cascade hops. And it's from uh, Bentwater Brewing, like I said, from Lynn, Massachusetts. Um, and I just took my first sip. It kind of, I mean, it just kind of tastes like a double IPA. Like there's nothing special about it, which is fine. Okay. Like I'm cool with that. Like it doesn't have any like, you know, fruit flavors or anything. It's just kind of like a citrus, you know double ipa um but that's i like it a lot actually so it's pretty I'm tasty glad. so we'll see i i do have a second one if we get to a second beer i know that's kind of uh aggressive for 2 p.m on a saturday we'll just <laughs> make your office recording a podcast but you know if we get there i have one of the other ones that you gave me for christmas so hey it's a saturday right 
I know. So it's fine. I was great. I just like had my cup of coffee and was doing stuff. And then I had my lunch and I was like, oh, I get to have a beer now. <laughs> right? This is nice. <laughs> so. So what are you drinking on, Marcus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, 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 I went local because that's what I heard you guys usually do. So um, yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. Brewery, um, I guess, in Gothenburg. It's a couple of uh, uh, 20 minutes car from here. Uh, it's okay. the big okay. city on the west coast, uh, and it's from uh, Douglas. It's called Tropic Thunder. It's a sour Ooh. fruit ale. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I don't really like IPAs. I realized yesterday because I, I bought a bunch of beers from for doing this, mm-hmm. yeah. and I cracked one open just you know just taste it and <laughs> man. <laughs> not my not, not my kind of beer. <laughs> yeah, it's different. But, but this one I do like. It's um, tr- I, I, should I read the label just like Kelly? Yeah, always? sure. Yeah. I feel like Kelly reads from a label all the time. I, I do. Uh, it's okay. So go here we go. Tropic Thunder is a joint effort with nomadic brewer Brian Strumpke of Stillwater Artisanal. Or it's not artisanal, is it? No, you're right. Mm. Artisanal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> artisanal. Uh, we brew this um, sour ale with lactobacillus and let it ferment with plentiful of mango, passion fruit, and peach sweet. And it's absolutely delicious. That sounds really good. 4.5 alcoholic. Perfect. Wow. That sounds really, really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we have a Tropic Thunder beer here in Pennsylvania. I'm sure somebody does, it. yeah. It rings a bell, but when it's, you know, different countries, I'm sure you can steal the name, even though it's not really stealing, you know? <laughs> no, it's like, a, movie. a movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess so. Yeah. It's a marijuana strain, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it's a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 All the big, big points there. <laughs> exactly. A marijuana well, strain. Yeah. They must have uh, patented that, that one. <laughs> they might have. Maybe. Patented that seed. Yeah. Maybe. All right, well. I am drinking on Thomas Hooker Brewing Company under the Wanaka tree. It's mm-hmm. a New Zealand hopped India pale ale. It has this like beautiful like bonsai tree uh, that's in a lake, it looks like, with mountains overseeing it. So the can says, under the Wanaka tree is inspired by a lone willow growing out of Lake Wanaka in New Zealand. Heavy doses of Stabra and New Zealand grown Matuka hops impart a deep haze and creamy head while smooth and juicy flavors of orange and coconut abound. And it's a 6.5%. And it's really good. Mm. It tastes to me like a glacier runoff, if that makes any sense. Like just like really fresh and like nature ridden. Or maybe yeah. the can's just speaking to me with the tree <laughs> and the lake. I don't know. Good marketing. But it's good. Yeah. <laughs> It definitely works. Um, so yeah, cheers, guys. Yeah, cheers. So, what have you guys been up to? How were your holidays, uh, Marcus? You want to tell us? Yeah, well, due to the pandemic, the holidays were pretty, pretty low key. Um, yeah. Usually, I would go to my parents' house uh, with my kids or celebrate with my girlfriend if I don't have the kids. So, but this year we, me and my girlfriend and with her kids and my daughters, we celebrate together. Uh, it was nice, you know, just, just the six of us and, um, New Year's all, only my girlfriend and I, we had a nice dinner, ate some lobster and so on. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's been very chill. You just hang out at home. And if it's nice outside, you try to be out. You know, we have like, it's dark here right now. So around 3 p.m. it gets dark. It starts oh, to get dark. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Is that not- because of how close you are to the hemisphere or like the yeah i yeah, would say we're up in the northern hemisphere and okay even if, if i'm in the southwest sweden it's pretty pretty far up so wow the sun rises at maybe 9 a.m and then we have sundown at yeah as i said four four three four p.m wow so you try at lunch you know if if you sleep in 
during the holidays you you try to get out as fast as you can so you get some sort of sunlight <laughs> right i bet wow that's amazing who would have thought that reminds me of that one movie what was it like 28 days at night or something yeah but i i think i think they were in alaska and it was vampires my oh. um my father <laughs> he's from way up north um and they have the the endless nights there, there as well Ah oh, man I couldn't do it. I'm so grateful for sunlight. <laughs> you should go yeah. in the summer because then the sun never sets. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that sounds so, <laughs> sounds so bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is because bad for your sleep. Yeah. Oh man, I bet. Got to have blackout curtains and uh, visors <laughs> on always. So well, I, I have a question quick before we switch gears. I just, I know that we're in, you know, for anybody who's listening to this in the future um, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. So obviously you're in a completely different country than us. So how, how is that like affecting you guys right now? Do you have lockdowns currently or anything very strict or are you a little bit freer than us? I don't know. I thought actually Sweden would be known for its non strict lockdowns because <laughs> it's been pretty much voluntarily. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, because we don't have the legislation uh, currently. They actually will vote it through, through a pandemic law, mm -hmm. uh, I think this morning or something, or, or no, sorry, oh, wow. not today, wow. but the Friday, um, to to be able to shut down shopping malls and so on because, um, yeah, well, they have needed to. Uh, otherwise, it's been, during the spring, it was very, very much, everyone took their own responsibility and tried to, work from home as much as possible and so on but no no real government law saying that you couldn't do this and that okay so basically everything open everything just is normal but if you went to ikea i did uh, once and it you're you're alone there it's like oh, a wow. waste wasteland of ikea, <laughs> and, ikea. Interesting. and it's fantastic i wish it was every time i was there <laughs> right <laughs> Oh That's man, amazing. that was the best part of the pandemic, like just driving into work because <laughs> my work never closed. And I was just like, wow, like when this used to take, you know, 20 minutes, it's now taking like five minutes on the highway. It's so yeah. nice. Yeah, absolutely. Like, now everyone's driving everywhere. So it's back to normal. Are people wearing masks then in Sweden? No, um, we didn't wear, we didn't have that um, mask uh, Sort of in, in, they didn't have, what, what do you call it? Um, like a law this, or. That's not a law, but a recommendation. A that was not yeah. recommended mandate, to wear. Yeah, yeah because um, they said it's more important to keep your distance. And if you wear your mask, then you get a full sense of safety and you stop actually staying apart oh from gosh. people. Oh, so that's what's the was the main idea by not wearing masks. Now they have that's sort actually. Of smart, though. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense because yeah. having masks and standing cl cl close to someone, well, then you're already at risk. If you don't have a m wear a mask and you're two meters apart, well, less risk. Mm -hmm. So yeah, makes sense. Uh, but now they actually in uh, on traffic and um, uh, communal traffic, uh, buses and trains and so on, you need to wear a mask. Okay. Okay. So they. So the, Oh, okay. Are you seeing an uptick in like cases and that's why they're looking to pass legislation now? Exactly. We've had pretty, it's been pretty bad here since uh, October, mid October, November. Uh, okay. And we uh, got that, um, that strain in uh, the mutation in uh, uh -huh. UK. It, it's been here as well now. And um, so, yeah. And, and there's a lot of, uh, so a lot of um, stress on people working in Medicare. Right? Right. No, it's not Medicare. Yeah, that's, that's your sort of <laughs> <laughs> healthcare. Yes. <laughs> yeah. People in healthcare and hospitals are overworked. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Not to keep talking about COVID, but I'm sure other listeners are interested because we're like in our own bubble in America mm -hmm. and it's sort of uh, polarizing. Like there's two different sides of it. Like some people don't care at all and are just fed up with everything and not really law abiding. 
and other people are taking it very seriously. And unfortunately, a lot of restaurants are closing down permanently because of it, because they can't afford to keep paying rent and their employees. Because our laws right now are like no restaurants are allowed and you can shop wherever you want to, which sort of sucks, you know, because everyone's out shopping all the time. So you can go to Ikea or Walmart or wherever and be shoulder to shoulder to people, but you can't go into a restaurant where the waiters and waitresses are wearing shields and masks and have a nice dinner with your loved one or family. So yeah, that sucks. Yeah, it, it does. <laughs> they, they actually, the thing they did here was that they, uh, first they had a no alcohol after 10 PM. Yeah. We did something <laughs> similar. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then they moved that to 8 PM oh, because God. you, well, apparently kids wouldn't stop partying. So, Mm. Um, but what's the drinking um, age in sweden uh i think it's is it 18 i'm okay. so old i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing <laughs> yeah i'm 43 so i think it was 18 and then i think you can shop alcohol when you're 20 okay. no no okay wait wait a minute oh. this is the reverse you buy <laughs> alcohol i think you can buy alcohol in the store, we have the Systembolaget, which is a state-owned, the yeah. only place where you can buy alcohol, um, or a, a, a certain percentage alcohol. You can buy light beer and so on in stores, but but not uh, 4.5 percent and so on. Yeah. Um, so I think it's 18 to buy there, but usually 20 when you're served, or or the other way around. Who knows? Who cares? So you can. <laughs> we're old. Yeah. We're old enough. So you- yeah, so you can drink at your house so at 18. Yeah. Technically. That's that's interesting. I sort of like that. Um we're just all all around 21 nationwide. All right. So yeah. Either way, um so your holiday sounded great. Kelly, you want to tell us about yours? Sure. Um yeah, my holidays were pretty good. I um obviously didn't go anywhere. Uh so it was a lot of hanging out at home um i bought myself a donut county as a little christmas gift because it was on sale for like three bucks on the e-shop and i beat it like christmas eve like i bought it christmas eve and beat it christmas eve so it took me like two hours or something um it was an excellent game and i really recommend it honestly i kind of want to buy the physical just because i loved it so much um yeah but it was such a fun game and I really enjoyed like the humor in it and everything. And um, so much so that my sister was like, I need a new game on my switch to keep me sane. Like, cause she's at home with my parents now. Um, she lives in Washington DC and basically just decided to come home and stay home until the end of January, you know, until things mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, subside, which is very smart. Cause otherwise I would have been driving myself down there to pick her up uh, the other day. And yeah. uh, so mm-hmm. she's at home and she's just like, I need, I'm working from home and then I just need something to keep me sane. So I was like, well, get this game. It's only three bucks. And I think you'd really like it. And she bought it and, she beat it in like a day too because I, I, so I just good. thought it was so funny because she doesn't like play games like we do, but yeah. she just was like busted through it. She's like, I love that game. It was so fun. So uh, I got her Katamari for Christmas and I need to uh, get it to her so she oh, can enjoy that too. Yeah. yeah. Once once I knew that she liked that game, I was like, she's going to love this. So yeah. Um, Donut Count- County, is that the one where you push a hole around and yes. make, make Katamari in reverse? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. So good. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, you know, I've been I've been working. Uh, business is doing really well. Uh, I've got a lot of orders coming through, doing a lot of inventory work and things like that. We just actually today we're working on uh, shelving in the basement to get everything really, it looks really official in my basement now, but next time you come over, it's, oh, I can't wait. it looks like a freaking business down there. Um, <laughs> Is that so, the other half of the basement? Not the yeah, one that you not, guys like. Remodeled? Not the finished half, like the, okay. the storage side. That's Perfect. essentially where my inventory is. Um, and then, yeah, and just been getting a couple good pickups from that. You know, people have been telling me about, you know, like friends have been like, Hey, I got this stuff and I don't really want it anymore. And, you know, I'm like, great, I'll take it. And I've been getting me some good stuff. So. Perfect. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know you uh, helped me out on a backwards compatible PS3 the other day when I saw you, which was yeah. so nice. You gave me such a good deal. Thank you. I can't wait to be playing PS2 games and with an HDMI cord. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be really nice. Um, yeah, for Christmas for me, hung out with family, got to see them, which I haven't seen my parents uh, since Thanksgiving. And that was like a five minute visit and I hated it. And I was like, dad, mom, like, I want to be with you guys. I want to see you. If we have to mask up, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And we did. And we were all safe about it. And it was it just felt really good. You know, like nobody wanted to leave because it's been so long uh, since we saw each other. But everyone's good now. Um, Gift wise, though, my wife surprised me with an amazing uh, neon light (laughs) uh, game room neon light. If you saw my instagram i've posted some pictures about it beautiful yeah i love it kelly i guess helped uh design (laughs) the letter i think kayla contacted me in like i want to say like august or september i was like i got this idea for Bo for christmas i'm like yo that's epic he's gonna love it and then she like (laughs) would text me every once in a while like what do you think about this i'm like yes absolutely like so she was telling me about this for months and i just had to sit on the podcast and like see you (laughs) and be like "Uh, hey Bo, what's up you're gonna love your christmas gift (laughs) <laughs> I couldn't yeah. tell you anything because I didn't want to give it away, but it was so no, good that I knew you'd didn't. love it. I knew you'd love it. She had such good taste. So shout out Kayla. Great job. Yeah. yeah, I was pretty amazed. I was shocked by it. Um because I remember her asking me months before Christmas. She was like, What's something you would want for Christmas? Or like what's like an all time like present of yours that you don't have that's like gaming related? And like I never want her to buy me gaming stuff because it's like either I might already have it mm-hmm. or I don't want it, you know? Um, it, it's just hard to buy gamers gaming presents. And Absolutely. I think she might've like voiced it. Like what's like a Holy grail item. And mm-hmm. I was like, I would love like an original Nintendo, like neon sign. Right. And I was like, but they're like, I'm not willing to spend thousands of dollars on one, you know? And I don't want her to spend that much money either. And I wasn't sure what she was getting at, but that was always on the back of my mind. Like, oh my gosh, is she going to buy me like a fake Nintendo sign? Like, I don't want that either. (laughs) So so when I saw it, I was just like, I was flabbergasted. I was just like, this is such a great present. This is such a good gift. Like, I love the color too. It's really like just so bright that you don't even have to have the light on. You just have that side on. Oh my gosh. But it's like yeah. not it's not like so it's yellow so it's not like my when I turn on like my blue PS2 neon sign that's like legit like from the the stores it's just the whole room is freaking blue and it's like it's kind of obnoxious but when you turn and and that's why I don't have it on all the time but when I like want I in the mood for it I'll do it but um yours is like you could leave it on and it's almost like a natural light color like with yeah. the yellow it doesn't really bother it, I would think it wouldn't bother you, whereas the blue is just like you're living it, in an Eiffel 65 song, and I don't want yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I would have been at like the bowling alley all the time, right, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's what it feels like. So when I'm in the mood to be in a bowling alley, but we can't bowl because we're in a pandemic, I turn on my neon sign so I can feel like I'm in the bowling alley arcade, and then like. I just have to find a candle that smells like Marlboro lights and then just yeah, like that. cigarettes. Yeah. 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 And like that and have something like stale beer and like food just laying out to get the full yeah. out of beer. And then nachos, I'll be fine. stale nachos. Yeah. Yeah. Bowling in the fun. background for the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Talking exactly. about bowling. Um, my wife like saw this carpet. Uh, it was like a, a tweet. And she tagged me in it or DM'd me it, and it was the bowling carpet, like the black carpet with oh the neon. Oh my god, I love stuff. those! I love and, them. And uh, the tweet was like, "I just found out you can still buy this carpet." Like, <gasps> and no. Kayla messages me this tweet, and she's like, "For our next house, for your game room." And I'm like, <laughs> "I am so happy I married you. Like, <laughs> you are amazing." <laughs> you gotta so, explain what, what's this bowling carpet? I have no oh, idea. Oh man! About. So okay. It, it's like it's black carpet with like fireworks going off in it. So like really bright neon colors and lights. If you look up like 
look up bowling carpet. I feel like you would be able to find it. Um, and like when the black lights go on in the bowling alleys for like right. night bowl, uh, it just shines. It it glows in the dark. So yeah, she messaged yeah, me okay, that. I see. Yeah, like yeah, like she looks like retro, you know, where fugly as hell. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, Yes, it is. Maybe I would just want like a section of it in front of my kiosk. But uh, I was yeah. talking about um, public transport seats with um, oh, okay. Mask Gamer from Germany. He was playing uh-huh. his Evercade on his way to work. And um, I saw those uh, the, the, the upholstery on the seats. They, they look the same as they do here in Sweden. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they have some sort of pattern and blue with some yellow red. Yep. I know exactly I, what you're talking about. Yeah, they will probably. I, I my theory is they they look like that because they that's the way you mask vomit. <laughs> oh my god! I feel there's something similar going on with the bowling carpet here. They you need to yes. mask stains and vomit. Stains. And yes. Just I, cigarettes I being put you. out. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I never even thought of that. I'm actually looking up pictures <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, completely. <laughs> So this was, this was kind of like, um, so when I was initially doing my, uh, my stand and like I was revamping it, um, I was putting my figures on that pegboard wall and, Mm -hmm. uh, it was black. And my idea was just do a black pegboard wall. And then I cut out stencils and I was going to buy neon spray paint and do like a bowling alley carpet pattern behind it with the neon spray paint and the stencils, but it didn't work because the paint wasn't good like it just didn't work yeah. and i was so upset because i had this wonderful idea that i was just gonna make this bowling alley carpet background and it was gonna be so retro looking and people be like oh i remember that stuff that's so cool and yeah then it just kind either, of fell apart hey, either way i actually went and saw your stand at american daydreams and antiques and miscellaneous is that the full title of the shop yeah american daydream antiques and miscellaneous is the full that's yes. a huge title for you a just shop. call it American Daydream. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. I love it. It's but like it, it wants to be a sentence, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's all encompassing because it's not just antiques. Like you were there. It's yeah. not just antiques. You have to include the miscellaneous because there's absolutely so, other shit there. Marcus walking into this uh big building, it's a bunch of like consignment little shops. Like, so everyone has their own stand. Kelly's upstairs in her retro and red rad stand. And it's just like a hipster antique shop. It's like everything you want to look at knickknacks, like toys, okay, so it's like a comics. shop and shop, Kelly's. Yes. But it's all like old stuff in the sense. Kelly, do you want to explain? Yeah, so I don't know what you have over there as far as like quote unquote antique stores. Like, do you do that kind of stuff over there? Oh yeah, there's a lot of antique stores in Sweden. Okay. So, but I think what you're describing sounds um, a lot like you know, London's Camden Lock Market. Okay. Basically, uh, okay. A, a huge area dedicated to small stands. Yeah. And they're, I think they're pretty much permanent. Uh, basically, it's just if you know. Typical flea market with um, different stands, but these are more permanent. Right. Yeah. So this is it's it's indoors. Yeah. This is an old barn that was repurposed. So there's two floors, and then they kind of section out a little space for each vendor. So there's about uh, 20, 25 of us that have spaces there. And uh, so we just put our items in our space and tag them with our like code and are like how much we want it to be. And then they take care of the rest of it, essentially. So we just come in and pick up the check. You don't really have to be there. Like you don't have to do anything. Um, I I do, but like you don't, if you were like somebody who worked full time, you could just put things in there on the side and it would just be like extra money. But this is now my full time thing. So I work behind the counter sometimes, but yeah. Um, it was so cool. Like just walking into it, there's like doll heads and like cool artwork and like like books and magazines that I wanted to like pick up and read each one. Like mm-hmm. there's skateboards. Um yeah. and then like I turn the corner and there's Kelly behind the counter. 
and <laughs> then there's a shit ton of Legos and oh, like yeah. Game Boy games that I saw. I saw uh, Survivor Kids. Survival Have you ever- Kids. Yeah. yeah, survival kids, which is like a ninety dollar Game Boy game, like just cartridge only. I'm like, holy shit! Like you don't see this even yeah. at like retro game stores. You don't see it. Yeah. Um, and I really wanted to buy. They had upstairs there was a clear green Zenith CRT 13 inch TV, and I'm like, oh, I need a new TV for the N64 kiosk. Like, granted, you wouldn't be able to see how cool this green shell was being in the kiosk, but uh. Ended up not buying it because it only had an antenna hookup and not like RCA cable hookup. Um, but really cool stuff in there. And your stand was awesome, Kelly. I ended, Thank you. ended up picking up a uh, Bomberman Max Red Challenger for the Game Boy Color mm-hmm. and uh, started playing that. It, it's tough. It's like a yeah. weird game. Like if Bomber you get touched, are once, weird. yeah. Like I love them for party games, but by yourself, it's sort of tough. Just made me uh, remind me of the uh, remote control for MT- uh, from MTV, the uh, game show. Mm-hmm. You remember I, that? Are you old enough to? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. they always no. had. They, we had that in uh, MTV Europe as well, mm. and um, they always had the Zenith TV for that you or Zenith uh, VCR, whatever as a price. Oh, uh, we we never had the brand Zenith here in. Sweden as well. Or wow. Huh. That's I don't know if we had this. Oh, we mm. remote control. Yeah, it's an American production. So you okay. pretty much I don't it. think I think but I, I think it was from the late eighty seven until ninety. Yeah, nineteen ninety. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty me. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was just born then. So uh no, but I sort of want to watch it now. That sounds cool. Yeah, it was pretty it was um, a good game show. I, I loved game shows as a kid. I still do. Not one of so my much. favorite, one of my favorite, not necessarily game show, but arcade game to play is deal or no deal. Have you guys ever played that in the arcade? Uh, I, I know mm-hmm. what you're talking about, but I don't personally play it where you like pick the women holding suitcases and you try to like not pick the million dollar one. Because you're hoping that the last like case is a million dollars that you picked early in the game. <laughs> and uh oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And so you're just like, oh, oh yeah, that, that red Yeah, that redhead number twenty two. I I want her <laughs> out. And and then the guy calls you and he's like, All right, I'll give you sixteen thousand dollars if you quit now. And it's like, no oh. deal, no motherfucking deal. Like there's a no deal button or a deal button and you just smash them. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> in the arcade like you're not winning money you're winning tickets but man if you get like 50,000 tickets 100,000 tickets or like the monetary value of those tickets it, it's just so much that comes out that you're like you hit a jackpot every time it feels like mm. cool I love yeah. bus for the PlayStation boss the music quiz and buzz the okay. oh, yeah. 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 with yeah. the little the little like remotes yeah, exactly. Like the buzzers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. gotcha. Yeah, those yeah, that's are a good fun. Game. Those are fun. I feel like I like those more. Obviously, I like those more when like I'm playing with other people. But I don't well, know yeah, if I just sit down and play a trivia game by myself. No, it's really. just sad. I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be doing that. Back a couple of years ago, when they had that trivia crack game come out on the the phones. Oh man, I was so good at that game. I should download yeah. that again. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. That was a good game. And you what? weren't necessarily like, I mean, you're playing against other people, but it was like at your leisure because it was like online. So you didn't have to worry about being in person. Oh, this would be really good right now. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait until after on. the podcast is over. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone starts. Yeah. I'm just doing trivia I'm while you're recording. Trivia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, Kelly, do you want to? say the plugs before we get into the interview with Marcus. Yeah, let's uh, let's plug it away. So if you're not already, please follow us on uh, social media. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Precisely Podcast, where you can see 
uh, all the fun pictures and things that we post. Also, uh, check out our website, precisely.live, which has uh, information, merch, old episodes, and also newly added to the website, um, the beers that we drank that episode. There'll be a picture and information about uh, what we drank. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for those. I got to check that out. Yeah, I mean, I, as, I of, right as, of, as of right now, it's <laughs> not right. it's not published yet, but oh, it will okay. be published at the end of today. So by the time okay. this episode comes out, it will be on there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, I know our last episode, we drank like six or seven different ciders throughout the episode. And it was pretty fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that episode a lot. Yeah, it was very good. All right, Marcus, Mr. <laughs> MKN underscore retro gamer. Yellow. What's your earliest memory of gaming? My earliest memory of gaming is when my family lived outside of Stockholm. Um, we had this neighbor. He was famous for, he, he was some sort of old army guy. I don't know what he did, but he had okay. like this, this smoke machine for, that you use in, in wartime. So you can like put fog all over the neighborhood. Oh, had one of those. What? <laughs> That's what my parents told me. I never saw that, but but they, he had all kinds of fec- technical gizmos, and I think they had like a vid- Philips video pack. Uh, I think uh, may, are those the Magnavox Odyssey in the states, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yep. I think they had some sort of thing like that, and you know, very very basic graphics. And they left me alone in the basement with that one. And <laughs> I was perfectly happy. Oh, wow. that's great. But, so your neighbor, he never lit off the smoke machine to like make the city foggy for a day? No, I, I, they, they, they were always joking about it. And I don't know yeah. if he really had one or whatever it was. Maybe it was just a disco smoke machine. But they, <laughs> and, and why would you have that as a... Like a... As a what as anyone use it for yeah what, what's I, the point? <laughs> it would be cool though yeah, it, yeah. Remind, it reminded me of something i haven't thought about in the longest time um my neighbor like houses houses down like probably like two blocks down but we could always hear him like every saturday morning he would be outside playing bagpipes and oh my gosh it was so loud but it was great like it was good irish bagpipes and we loved it <laughs> but uh i'm sure like the next door neighbors hated him like, oh that was so loud <laughs> pretty cool though oh, yeah. cool. it's like being w- woken up by a rooster but it's only fun <laughs> for 5 minutes but it's a <laughs> yeah, but it's an irish guy just yeah. belting away. <laughs> I, I would think that I'd rather be woken up by bagpipes than a rooster, honestly. Yeah, because yeah. the rooster never stops. They go all through the day. I don't yeah. know what's wrong with them. Just to- and the rooster is like not musical at all. It's just no. like yelling. And then oh, yeah, bagpipe is just like, you know, you can play Oh Danny Boy or whatever for three hours or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd rather the bagpipes. <laughs> yeah. Uh all right, so uh, when did you start collecting video games, Marcus? Oh, I think back in 2015 or something. Mm-hmm. We can always check my Instagram account if you care to scroll 700 posts back. <laughs> um, then I started, I, I got the urge to play Advance Wars again. That's my mm. favorite game on the, ga- uh, the Game Boy Advance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, such a great game. Yeah, so my first Game Boy Advance was uh, GBA SP the clamshell version Mm -hmm. and then i actually black okay Uh, and uh, i got it when working for a company that actually we did a lot of uh, event marketing for bagsala which is the swedish or scandinavian reseller i I read somewhere they're the only third party reseller of nintendo nintendo stuff anywhere in the world Still, still in existence because oh, wow. of that man over Barstein had a very, very close relationship with Nintendo. Interesting. So, and, yeah, I'm familiar yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they live. It's in Kungsbacka. Just that's where I grew up. So, um, and well, this was in Gothenburg, and uh, blah blah blah, and lost track. 
and <laughs> I wanted to play again. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Advance Wars essentially got you back into collecting. That's yeah, cool. I, I bought one SP from one of those ugly tribal ones from eBay and Advance Wars. And I quickly learned about fake games the hard way. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Metroid Zero Mission, which was fake from France. Uh, eBay reimbursed me, so no problem there. Um, and then I, it just started, you know, started growing small. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I like, yeah, that's that, awesome. I like that that's the game that got you into it, too. Like, that's cool because a lot of people are just like, oh, I'm buying back my childhood and stuff. And But that's like a cool like game to have like because most people are like oh it's mario or you know whatever but advanced wars is not one that you have like i don't feel like a lot of people are like advanced wars is just really hitting my nostalgia <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's right? such a great game. Now we know. it's boring it, it's good i just I, it's one you don't hear people talk about a lot so that's cool did you people play it back it. in the yeah i agree did you play it when when it first came out, like in 2003 or five or whenever it was. Yeah, uh, I did. And I, I, back then I bought games because that's the only way you could find them uh, mm-hmm. from, sorry, that's just the stupid thing to say. <laughs> as opposed <laughs> to stealing them. Um, right, yeah. yeah instead but, of them uh, falling into your lap from the sky <laughs> when you're outside. Yeah, and you can down, I, I had a flashcard <laughs> back then. So as well, but I, I furiously, uh, researched what good what games are good yes and uh, yeah. advanced force was one of those games that had massive uh popularized by, yeah. uh, by reviewers <laughs> everywhere yeah great ratings and i just fell in love with it it's so colorful it's so fun it's it's quick you, everything you do is quick it and is. If, if you get bored of the cutscenes, you can always just disable them and oh yeah still play for hours and even if you beat the game you can play it again or you can play extra maps and against other persons and so on so endless of fun man you got me wanting to to buy it back again (laughs) you need to have it yeah i think i had it cib and i sold it and yeah i probably shouldn't have done that oh no that, this yes. is going to be the. <laughs> this is today's purchase because usually yeah, I'm already somebody, on eBay. <laughs> somebody always ends up buying a game in the middle of a podcast. It's like, oh yeah, well, we were talking about that ten minutes ago. I already bought it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's great. Um, I am going to buy it though. Um, <laughs> living in Sweden, what is the retro collecting scene look like? Is there one? Are there events? Are there stores? Yes, there are stores, there are events, and it's a very lively community. Wow. Um, we have uh, usually, uh, I say because we didn't have any events this year, yes. but there's usually one in Malmö, which is our third largest city. There's one in Gothenburg, mm-hmm. close to me here, which, which I usually attend. I've been there once, so usually it's a bit of an overstatement, but I should have gone this year if they be open. There's one, I don't know if there's one in Stockholm, the capital, but there's a smaller one in not far from Eskilstuna. It's a place called um, Vesteros, which is, that's basically part of the Stockholm area. Um, okay. That's, uh, they have a retro gathering there. Mm. Um, and I think those are the three big ones. And then there's one in Oslo as well. Oslo is not that far from here. So I could go there if I wanted to, but I've never. I've never been to Oslo, so I don't know why I'm talking about that one. <laughs> um, uh, and there's stores. Uh, in Gothenburg, we have the my favorite store, which I always go to whenever it's open. Uh, Boutique Macapal, which is sort of basically Boutique Gizmo or store Gizmo store, if you want. Okay, <laughs> okay. that's cool. Transla- translated. And he's got everything. He's got um, retro clothing, as in... 80s 90s clothing and he's got small japanese figurines he's got a lot of japanese import stuff in in terms of gaming but he also buys in from people selling their coming to him and selling uh, you know their collections and so on and he's got mm, masters of the universe he-man figures and Uh yeah so so this sort of sounds like what kelly has going on yeah that kind of yeah it's very similar that's really that's really cool 
It's very, very similar. And he's such a nice guy. Uh, Marcus is his name as well. Um, you know, he, he never, he's never too busy to talk to you. Uh, and he's, you know, uh, very considerate. He actually gave me yeah. one, a Christmas present this year. I had no idea. And he, he, he was in cahoots with my girlfriend when she bought a Christmas present at his store for me. So <laughs> cool. Yeah, I saw that post. Uh, that was really cool that she like went out of her way to find a game that you didn't own. Yeah, and you know? I almost bought it. You know, <laughs> yeah. When we were there, she was like, she's no, she's never to get me out of there. And this time she, yeah. was like, whoa, whoa, come on, what, what's wrong? Are you are you not into this anymore? Are we? Are, are you yeah. are you getting bored with my obsession of video games? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was very relieved to find out that was not the case. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So, I, so do you guys have like, um, do you have like specific video game stores there, like GameStop and stuff, or like any kind of specific retro gaming stores at all? I think they're all closed down by now. I don't know Aww. if we have we had Game, we had GameStop, and in the eighties mm-hmm. and so on, we had other stores, of course, um, that were prominent prominent in gaming. But mm-hmm. I think nowadays there's just the big, the big, um, the big stuff. Consumer electronics stores, you know, where you go yeah, buy dishwashers and new TVs, and they have yeah. Nintendo, Microsoft, and PlayStation. Gotcha. Um, so then, do you do like? Are there thrift stores and yard sales? Is that like a thing? Uh, yes, people do that, uh, and a lot of people in the retro gaming community do that. But uh, for me, I like to spend time uh, elsewhere. <laughs> so I've, yeah. I've, I've tried. I've tried to go to thrift stores, and I, I found maybe one or two good things there once. But I actually found those, kiss, um, you know, cassette tape holders. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Seen, seen my post about that. It's in um, fall wood. Uh, and plastic pull out cases. It looks really nice. So I p- place all my um, the Famicom cassettes in there. Oh, okay. Very cool. Uh, I found those at a thrift store. So that's a good find. But and I know <laughs> people find all sorts of things. I see them posted on Facebook and on Instagram. And But but I don't really find the time to do that. So I, yeah. I, I pay a little extra and go to people like Kelly's stores and, and buy stuff. Yeah. I yeah. don't blame you. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's great when you do find something there, but time is also money too. And if you just yeah. want something and you want to make sure that it's good condition, just buy it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like there is a Goodwill uh, by my house and Kelly's and I know exactly where the game should be, you know, not like they're always there, but I always just streamline it there. If I am driving by and see if there's anything. If there's not, I just walk right back out because there's nothing else that I really want. You know, like I don't want to go through all the the shirts and stuff. I I just want what I want, and if it's not there, I'm out real quick. Yeah. But yeah, it is it is time consuming. You know, going on the hunt. But yeah. uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I saw yeah. a collection once um, on an in a other a Swedish uh, show. He was. He has everything CIB. It's wall to wall with games, and they're in mint condition. And he found all of them in the wild in two years. Oh, wow! And I was, how and the hell do you do that? What year and was that, though? That was this year. He's the guy oh, I bought wow. the Vectrix from, and wow. um, apparently he works as. Um, you know, when you get a, a when your toilet gets clogged up. You need to yeah, call the plumber. Yeah, yeah. Plumber. Uh, well, he's not a plumber. They they come with a, a huge car and flush out the oh the, the sewer. sewer. Yeah, sewer tank car. Yeah, yeah. So he he says that. Okay, so I usually I come there and I, I help them out, and you're you're their savior at that time. And they ask he asked them if you have any old games lying around. And they're so happy because they they he's really oh my out. gosh so, wow. so he just every single week he finds something wow that's he's the job smart. Should, yeah that's, that's a, really smart but need, you need yeah, to have we all need good jobs yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely 
That's wow. smart. That's a smart That move. is smart. So I'm he gets paid. Poop, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> so he gets paid by them, and then he's like, Do you have any video games as a tip? Yeah. But without um, saying it like that, I'm sure. That's yeah, great. He, I don't know what he pays them or if he you know, everyone knows how to look up a price today. So right. exactly. They're just happy to and most people that he asked, I guess, don't want it. Yeah. They just want a toilet that works because they probably need to shit real bad. Yeah. yeah. I know I know I've been in that situation. I live in an apartment where the where the toilets start working and when that when that guy comes, you're so grateful. Yeah. And and you also want them to leave right away. Too. So it's yeah. like, hey, you want video games? Here you go. Take and leave. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So I mentioned this earlier, but um are there arcades in Sweden? I'm sure, um, like you can't go to them right now, but are there? Had some weird ass law in the '80s that sort what? of um, it, it didn't forbid, but it set in an age for like 16 to play arcade games because it felt in under gambling or something. Whoa! Uh, I haven't what? really researched this, so I'm just talking shit right now. But but there's something <laughs> like that. It was some sort of reason that really didn't make having an arcade uh, profitable. So there were a few at amusement parks. So in, in Gothenburg, we have Liseberg, which is the biggest uh, amusement park in Sweden. And they have a big house where we, as a kid, when we were kids and we were in 16, we used to try to sneak in there past the guards. Because once mm. you were in, you could, you could have come in with your father or so, and so they can't kick you out. Okay. You just get past the guards to get in to play Street Fighter and so on. Oh, cool! Wow. So yes, there's one arcade in that I know of, and and I guess there's others in other com- amusement parks. And nowadays, there's of course um, privately owned people like retro in the retro community that so on. And there's a bar in Gothenburg as well that has a it's sort of like a. Uh, youth center back in interesting in, yeah it's it's a bar it's not a youth center so would you get that clear yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, it, but it's like a youth center because they have all the stuff they have a uh, pinball machines they have um you can play um jenga it's like giant jenga oh in, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. and they have pool tables and arcade machines and so on that's oh, awesome okay. awesome yeah so we would call that like a barcade yeah and there's yeah there's one in every city, I want to say. Um, now it didn't used to be that way, but it didn't now used to be that way. Yeah, I've seen I've, when once you mentioned Barcade, I realized that we have I've seen photos from them in Stockholm as well. So I guess they're they're a bit here and there. Okay, that's interesting. I'm glad I asked that because that's crazy that that law was a thing. So is it still a thing, or yeah, I, you, probably I would say. Interesting. Because I, I, I know that uh, the Retro Spilsmessan, which is the retro gaming uh, expo, uh, that's the one here in, in Gothenburg, they have uh-huh. a sort of a section about that on their homepage. Oh, wow. And they, they have a huge arcade. When they have that uh, event, they have a huge arcade where you but can it's just all go. to play, so it's yeah, not exactly. gambling then. Mm, interesting. That's cool. I'll have to look more about that. That's an interesting fact I didn't know. Yeah. Okay, so, cool. so my experience with arcades were usually when we went to the Canary Islands or on on, on holiday. That's okay. when you, as a kid, can go into arcades deluxe and just go bananas. My my mom forbade me to go <laughs> into those. We, we weren't for two weeks to Lanzarote when I was twelve. Uh, that's the Canary Islands. And mm-hmm. okay. the first week I wasn't, I didn't have a tan because I was spending time <laughs> working all the time just watching stuff. I didn't have any, that much money. So I, maybe I could play a few games, but yeah, just looking at stuff, you know, looking for squatters or in the, in the, when the money drops out, just yeah, checking yeah, everything, right. just trying to find some money. Oh, absolutely. Those days. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You walk in the arcade, your mom wouldn't give you any money, and then you're just yeah. like shaking the machines violently, hoping that a quarter <laughs> falls out until somebody notices you and they're like, hey, uh, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when you tell a kid they can't have something, but now you can have something, yeah. Believe me, you just go batshit crazy, and that's all you want. 
you know <laughs> it's like you are addicted to something that you never tried before exactly yeah <laughs> so what's your favorite system to collect for oh definitely the pc engine okay nice i bought that for i, I guess it's almost two years ago now mm-hmm. from uh, that boutique macapair mm-hmm. at the retro spells mesa and uh, i was sort of uh, we never had it here we had there, there was a release in europe but it was in mainly in spain uk and uh, france and they were all different uh, agents for it so um, it was named differently in all those countries and so on so it wasn't a huge deal not like the turbo graphics in in the states and, which also uh, wasn't a huge deal in the states no, so. it wasn't a huge yeah. but you had it for yes. i mean i maybe saw uh, screenshots from it on the back of the cart on the commodore 64 version which <laughs> was so much worse uh, but when you saw the this engine it looks amazing mm-hmm. uh, and you can see it maybe screenshots in computer magazines and so on but we we never had it so that was sort of a system i was sort of intrigued by and and i tried it and there's there's so many fun games and it's it looks so good and also that format the the cards it's just your collection is so small i have 43 cards and it takes up <laughs> less space than anything else i have <laughs> Even my PCN, uh, sorry, even my um, Neo Geo Pocket Collection, which is like five games, takes up more yeah, space yeah. than the forty-three cards. Oh, that's <laughs> an exaggeration, but you know, you get the idea. That's cool. No, I agree. It, it's a very, uh, it's very small. Even with the cases, it's very small. This, yeah. The cases are skinny and stuff. Um, it's something I wanted to collect for and absolutely loved. But as soon as I got an EverDrive, I was like, I'm just selling all these games. Like I don't need them. <laughs> You know, like as much as I'm a collector, I also have limited space and, you know, yeah, something and, uh, that some of the games are expensive. With. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it was too expensive that like I wanted to keep playing it, but I wanted to play all of them without breaking my bank. So, you know, a $200 EverDrive compared to thousands of dollars for a few video games, you know, mm-hmm. you know, the and also like the TurboGrafx-16, like you were saying. I never even heard of it until I started collecting. Like I I knew no one that had one. I didn't know what the cases looked like if I was going thrifting because they would probably be in the music section, you know, with the CDs. Yeah. yeah. Like I probably missed out on a bunch of them because I never even knew about them until 5 6 years ago, mm-hmm. probably. But yeah, it's a great system. True. Cool. So, what's your favorite piece in your collection? Oh, that has to be the Vectrix. Yay. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> I had a follow-up question, just in case you didn't say Vectrix, because I wanted you to talk about the Vectrix. So, yeah, yeah tell because us- that is so... That's such an odd system. And, and th- that's mainly the only reason I wanted it, because it's s- so different from anything else. It's like a mini kiosk it has its own screen but it's huge it's, it's like a table huge it's yeah. like uh, it's it's really small actually Is it? i guess it's, it's maybe a, a 12 inch screen maybe but okay, it's but uh, the- in tate mode which i learned how to pronounce which it's, it's standing it's portrait mode okay mm-hmm. uh, okay and you have so maybe it's about i don't know inches but let's yeah, let's not talk about size. Um, yeah, because <laughs> that will just translate badly. Um, and it's really small, much smaller than I thought, actually. So, and it has a built-in uh, joystick in the, the the a cover. So you f- flip down a cover, and you have the joystick there. It's four buttons, an analog stick, and you have a, a second controller port you can play actually against other people. And the screen is not a, a CRT. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, but it's very, it uses a similar technique, but instead of drawing a, a line by line down the screen, it draws one, a dot and, and connects that dot to without a dot. So, so it basically just draws in, in lines 
So everything right. is super sharp. Yeah. But it doesn't have color. So every if you want to add color to a game, you use overlays, which works so cool. really, really good. For example, in Scramble, you have the top of the cave, that's a, a, a red part. And then in the middle, there's a yellow. And in the bottom, there's a green part. So everything sort of has a, a, a color of the, gets the color of the overlay and, and it looks really good. Oh, it looks so cool. I'm looking up images of it now. Yeah, my buddy um, has a Vectrex, and he had been looking for one, like, complete, I think, for a couple years. And he finally found one that was suitable for him at uh, <laughs> the Too Many Games Festival a couple years ago. Um, but it is super cool. And, like, he's he's the only reason I pretty much know anything about the Vectrex, because most people don't either know about it or care about it but it's a super cool system and like it definitely doesn't get enough love in the world <laughs> no it doesn't no I, i've never heard of it before until i started collecting retro gaming stuff and i started watching uh, classic game room on uh, youtube mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mark he always talks about or the vectrex and he has this you know radio voice <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and and which is okay so what is this and I started seeing, and the, the guy Marcus at Boutique Macapair, he, he has one in the store. So I got to try it out there and so on. And, and that's, that one isn't for sale. Mm -hmm. And they never come up in, in retro gaming groups on in yeah. Sweden. You, know, you see them like maybe once a year, and they're pretty pricey, about $300. Yeah. 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 Um, so... I, as I said, I was the guy I bought the vectors from. He he was in an interview on another uh, YouTube, uh, a Swedish YouTube channel, and he tried to s flip that vectrix onto the 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 guy interviewing him. And I was and he I it's like okay he didn't buy it did he because he didn't post anything about it afterwards. So I was like hmm. I contacted him on uh, Instagram and about uh, did you did you sell that or is it still for sale? I'm sorry for budging in here. I'm just curious. Uh, <laughs> no, it's still for sale. Do you want it? And and I was just uh, yeah. What what what? You know? Okay. What am I doing? How much do you want for it? Uh, and yeah. what, what's condition is it in? And all those things. That is there anything I need to know about the Vectrex? You know. Is it, does it need a recap or, you know, all those things that you've learned about when, when in the retro gaming community, it's like, yeah. there's a bunch of systems that has generic flaws that you, you just need to get sorted or don't make a mistake buying that one because, you know, you'll spend $800 on trying to fix it, it or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he just, he wasn't. I was very, I had FOMO, huge FOMO. <laughs> uh, he wasn't really quick on re replying. And I guess he's, he's, he's a family man and he's got his life. And I, I don't blame him. I mean, uh, but I was like, ah, have, just don't sell it. <laughs> don't sell it. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but he was super nice. So, um, good. and he packed it up real good and sent it to me. So he lived, no. Uh, I went three hours away from here, but you know, you got to find time to do that. And so he shipped it. It turned out perfect. That's, That's awesome. awesome man. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things to, to see on your page because nobody talks about it. You know, um, it's such a obscure piece of history and of gaming history at that. I did look up the size, the dimensions of the screen and it's a nine by 11 inch screen mm -hmm. so it's sort of like a computer paper size yeah 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 that sounds yeah. about right yeah yeah i think the only time i've ever seen them in person is at too many games and that that's it like maybe i've seen like five vectrexes tops in my life but they just don't show up very often and when they do you're right you have to make sure that they're not having like any cap issues or anything because i know that that was a problem with with them burning out or whatever you know and after certain years of play yeah i almost had the chance to buy one or i did but i opted not to because it was just like too pricey for me and i was yeah, like it's not cheap how much did my they ask for it? 
it so this one was complete in box like it had the original box too and yeah. i think they wanted 450 or 500 for it sounds about right and i was yeah. just like uh like that is like an appropriate price but you know when most of my kiosks cost less than that yeah <laughs> I, 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 was I was like i hesitated i gave I, yeah. roughly 300 bucks for mine as well uh, yeah bought a couple of games with it as well but i was like mm, this chance is not coming again so yeah very much I, so. I, i've got to jump at it if i want it yeah just i can always flip it mm-hmm. that's, exactly that's how i think about everything if it's fairly priced and if i don't like it well sell it if you don't like mm-hmm. it exactly that's a good way to look at things um when i whenever i like buy a kiosk or something I'll always ask my wife, you know, get her permission first. And she'll always be like, do you think you're going to see another one? And I'm like, no. And she's like, is this a good deal? Yes. Then I guess get it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like I always have to ask permission first and make sure that it's fine and like talk about it with someone else. But yeah, I mean, FOMO for real like the N64 kiosk I got at too many games and Kelly was there the day before this it's a gaming expo and uh Kelly texts me a picture of it and she's like hey there's a kiosk here N64 I'm like oh my god like I want it tell me about it how much <laughs> blah 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 and like it took her fucking forever to get back to me at least like time felt so slow and I'm was, like, why is she not responding? And <laughs> probably like 10 minutes I went by. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny because I was there, like it's a huge expo. So I'm like seeing people looking at stuff. Like I'm not on my phone actively. And then also I'm in a giant like concrete building with thousands of people. So yeah, you know that like I probably could either. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I like finally look at my phone and there's like 20 text messages. Kiosk, <laughs> and I'm like, well, man, calm down. It's here. I, I didn't think anybody was going to buy it. Like. I didn't yeah. think I didn't think the right person was there, and plus it was Saturday, so I really also didn't think anybody would buy it because they usually buy on Sundays and stuff. But yeah, no, it was funny though. <laughs> it was funny, and then I ended up getting it for a seal, like three hundred bucks. Plus they threw in an extra controller, and like the TV needed to be replaced, and I need to replace the one that I replaced it with already. But um, and the controllers I had to replace the thumbsticks on, but like three hundred bucks for a whole standing kiosk it like i'll take that any day you know yeah it seems very very reasonable yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah so um what is your favorite video game or if you don't have one your favorite genre of video game oh this is a question that gets asked a lot in in, in when people post on instagram and and I, I feel like I'm always a- answering differently because yeah. it depends on mm-hmm. the day, you know, the, your mood. It's true. But, uh, since I got the PC Engine, I've gotten really much into shmups. And mm-hmm. um, there's one that I played as a kid on a different system, but R Type, the original okay. R Type, I played on the PC Engine. And it's such a fun game. And, so and it's hard as hell. Yeah, and I've just the, the Japanese version was uh, split up on two hue cards. Mm-hmm. So if you use R Type One and R Type Two, oh wow! So basically, the first is just the four first levels, and the second one starts with level five. And I interesting. Got, yeah, I got R Type Two first, which is it's like to survive for twenty seconds. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you you're just like oh. Okay, this was hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, uh, if you haven't played it before, you, you know, just trying to f- trying to stay alive is hell. It is. And, um, but now that I've actually managed to beat R Type One, uh, which basically means the four first levels, uh, I, I didn't. I, I'm starting to, but I want to beat it. So I get all the, I, you can bring with a code, you can bring all the power-ups you had when you beat the game. You can bring it on to R-Type 2. Oh, wow. So I want to beat it. I, I mean, I could find the code on the internet and go yeah, on. But but I, I want to, you know, honestly beat the game and have as yeah. much, much um, power-ups as I can so I can have a fighting chance because level 5 is... Ooh. 
nightmare. Yeah, I bet. So with the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics, uh, for the people that don't know, there's a switch on the controller that you can turn it on Turbo mode. Yeah. So with the Turbo button on the PC Engine, does it rapidly fire uh, shots then out of your spaceship? Yeah, it, it it basically on the fastest setting, it's like a stream, a steady stream yeah. of shots. So it does get a bit simpler than just mashing the button and, and or, but you can't do the power up with the, the turbo on, Okay, you know, the, the powered up shot when you charge yeah. it and release. So um, that's the caveat though. So, but I usually go, go with the, once you power up and you have the, the, orb in the front uh and shooting in different directions and so on it just mashes through everything hmm. yeah i played our type on the super nintendo and i think i got to the second level but it was like really tough and i immediately died if i did so yeah tough game i hope you get to level four with a bunch of power-ups that'd be awesome yeah I hope so too, but you usually die at the start of level four. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, simple question mm -hmm. handheld or console? Well, I gotta say handheld. Yeah. Uh, which is, yeah, I said different answers to the same question every day. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> I think Kelly I like, and I are handheld too. Yeah, yeah, because I love just being able to sit in bed or in the sofa, or, you know, really, or or on a bus when yeah, you actually anywhere. ride a bus. But um, you know, or when in the toilet, I love playing games in the toilet and stay yeah. there until my legs fall asleep and I can <laughs> barely stand up. <laughs> oh, that's so great! So do you like I, keep I've a basket minutes, in your backpack? like gripping the 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 what do you call it the the sink, but in the bathroom, that's the where you wash your hands. Just yeah, yeah, the sink. Yeah, yeah, the sink. Uh, I'm gripping that for five minutes, just getting sense. trying to stand back up. It, yeah, <laughs> trying to stand back up is horrible. <laughs> it do, you, it. <laughs> do you like keep a basket of like handhelds in your bathroom then? So, like, when no, you go no. to the toilet, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh. You, I had friends like that when you when you were a kid. You had they had like stacks of magazines. Yeah. But I was so, sort of a, a neat kid, so I had my magazine, my comics in in binders. Uh, I was really uh -huh. careful. Um, so I there's no no such things I could have. Maybe I should <laughs> maybe I should put in some. But then people <laughs> would just sit down on the toilet and then notice them, and then you, you don't want people with you know. Rising up <laughs> after starting. <Exactly>. So. <laughs> That's I true. I actually have um, one handheld always by the toilet in case it's a long session on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that goes back to our most recent podcast before this one. It's the Oregon Trail handheld. All right. So, so I can play that while taking a number two, and it's pretty fun. <laughs> Die of this this Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> while on the toilet while my legs are falling is, isn't like one of the side effects of dysentery like a lot of pooping or something isn't that oh, i'm sure yeah you yeah i think so that. i think that's yeah. basically what you do uh, until you die interesting yeah. yeah you're just dying by shitting yourself oh, no. that's terrible uh, dehydration yeah but oh. the uh, my favorite uh, console handheld is the game boy advance and i really like the original game boy but with the advance, you have you have the option of so the entire Game Boy original Game Boy library and all the things up to the Game Boy Advance. So hands down, the best console ever. Which Game Boy Advance? PSP. The SP. AGS okay. 101. Mm. Yeah. Backlit there screen. Go. See, I just find it too small for my hands. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say I like. I also agree with you in the fact that the Game Boy Advance SP is, or the Game Boy Advance is the best, like handheld hands down. But the SP is just too tiny in my hand, so I mm -hmm. like having the the original. But I have the backlit screen mod because yeah. because we're old and we need to see, I need to see. what we're doing. <laughs> we need yeah. to see. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, That's I totally amazing. agree with you. 
You actually just asked our, you answered our next question. What's your favorite handheld? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Sorry. It's funny. No, it's Can perfect. we talk about the next beer now? Because I'm sort of. Yeah, good please. Week. Go yeah, for it. Please. So you, I bought you, this. Uh, it's NAS Echo Ale. Echo, like in echo, okay. organic. Uh, thinking it was from a castle just a few kilometers from here, uh, which it turns out not to be. Uh, however, oh. it's from the place where we had our summer cabin uh, in Idre Commune. And this is, I guess, I should read the label. This is, uh, yeah, organic ale. Uh, Nas Echo Ale is a light amber colored ale. I'm translating, so that's why it's a bit slow. Uh, inspired fun. by British pub beer. Uh, the beer has a multi scent. Is uh, well, what would you call the smell? A uh, multi smell. <laughs> Sam, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I just lost it. <laughs> oh. And a nuanced flavor of, uh, okay, so uh, bread, knick, which I can't, uh, what, it's sort of like caramel, I guess. Okay. And uh, nuts. And I'm about to taste this. This is uh, 5%. Okay. So let's uh, give it a sip and see what we think. Yeah, this was good. This was not as bad as the one I had yesterday. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm hard. I'm, I'm not used to describing, but it was just uh, not lager, but yeah, basically an ale, uh, lightly colored, lightly flavored. You know, refreshing. Okay, that's Sorry cool. Sorry for not being more. <laughs> that's cool no i think i actually i it i commend you for uh the on the spot translating and like thinking in a different language i know it's difficult so i appreciate that you are speaking to us and i guess your native tongue is not english so no yeah so that that's really cool that that um because we haven't had anybody on here that technically i th i think well our, our other country that we've had on here is Canada. So I don't think that I think they were <laughs> primarily English speakers, but it's cool to have a non-native English speaker with us and to learn a little bit more about things across the pond. Um, I'll crack open my next one as well with you. Uh, so I have this one um, that, so Bo got me like a four pack of beer for Christmas. Um and this one he gave me is from Thomas Hooker Brewery. It's called the Hubble Sequence, an Indian pale ale with mm. galaxy and mosaic. Um, so it says, character, out of this world. Exploration of the Hubble Sequence will reveal an egregious amount of galaxy and mosaic hops highlighted by a simple grain bill. Notes of pineapple, peach, and mango are framed by an earthy backbone, which combine to offer a cosmic taste experience. Mm. Uh, so it's a 6.3%. Um, and Thomas Hooker is in Connecticut, which is, I don't know how familiar you are with the United States, is a couple states north of us um, here in I Pennsylvania. Think I've, I've, I got you down on the eastern. Yes, on the eastern coast. Here. Side, yeah. are, are Pennsylvania, do you have a, do you have a, are you, a, do you have a, your own coastline or, or are you landlocked? <coughs> um, excuse me. You're in Pennsylvania. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So there's no there's no coastline for us. Uh, we have one body of water really bordering us, um, which is Lake Erie, which is in the uh, northwestern half of the state, kind of, which is, if you go across Lake Erie, you go into Canada, essentially. Yeah. Um, so, but we do, I mean, if we wanted to go to a coastline, it's probably about two, depending on traffic, two to four hours to get to a beach. Oh. Um yeah. Probably from where we are, we're the next state over has the coast, so you could go into Maryland Delaware. or Delaware or New Jersey to get um, in yeah. there. Okay. But uh, anyway, this beer is uh, actually really smooth, Bo. This is nice. Good. Um, I like. Is that this. the one with like a like a car driving around the space or something? No. So it's like a bunch of almost like nebula shaped planetary shapes in like okay. a Y format coming down the can. Yes. Um, so, 
Yeah, maybe like a bunch of Tool album covers just coming down okay. the side. <laughs> I can um, take it. Yeah, no, it's actually really good. I like, I like that. Um, I think I have one more left to try from your your pack. I'll have to save. I'm glad you saved them for the podcast. That's, I, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I didn't save the sleds one because I really wanted to try that one. But how um, was that, by the way? I love that. That was so good. Okay. So, I'm gonna pick up some. Okay, so yeah, so just so everybody knows, so in the four pack he gave me, uh, what was it, like three double IPAs and then or just three IPAs, and then he gave me this other one. It was called Sleds, and I can't remember who made it now off the top of my head, but it basically was just like this really colorful can, and it had a sled, like a wooden old fashioned sled on the front, um, and it was a cranberry shandy, so it was just like. It was red in color and it was just like this really sweet, but like kind of sour, you know, like when you're eating cranberry sauce, just, Mm -hmm. but in a shandy format and it was super good and very, uh, very wintry. I liked it a lot. So I'm going to have to try to find some more of that because that was really good. Yeah. It's a funk brewing company. That's what it was. Shandy, is that the beer or lager and uh, sort of, uh, so shandy shandy's more like a like a lemonade like yeah spritz. exactly yeah yeah it's more like a summer beer but this one with the cranberry i guess it, makes it taste yeah. like a winter beer yeah <laughs> like well, a yeah, lighter yeah. Fresh winter I, I don't usually eat cranberries and well i shouldn't say that but i don't usually eat cranberries alone in like the warmer months it's more of a cold month you just dig into some cranberry sauce with you know thanksgiving and everything but yeah yeah so the beer i'm drinking is amazing uh kelly you tried it the other day when you were over it's uh from mother earth brewing company and it's called cali cream and vanilla cream ale cream sickle dude i was hoping you'd bring this one up <laughs> yo this might be like my favorite beer and it's just like a regular ale but it tastes like a orange cream sickle ice cream it is so good it just tastes like dessert in a can yeah it, uh, it, you poured me some of it when i came over you were like oh do you want to try this and i'm like yeah, yeah. absolutely and i just I was like floored when I took that first sip. It was so good. I hope this is like a yearly thing. Like I hope they always have this in sock because it is so damn good. But it has a VW Vanagon on it with a surfboard and it's like dripping like a like ice cream cone dripping and just tastes very creamy. It's brewed with lactose, it says, and it weighs in at a 5%. Nice. Yeah, but. If you've ever had an orange creamsicle, this is it in beer form. I love orange creamsicles. Right? <laughs> so good. I'm totally not down getting for... that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the reference. I'm, I'm not getting the reference because what's so? What's an orange creamsicle? Okay. Oh. So it's like okay. So it's a popsicle. Yeah. So you, you know a popsicle. Okay. So it's just orange in color. So it tastes like orange, like an orange, and then in the middle it has like a white creamy vanilla, All right, vanilla okay. kind of substance that when you bite into it you have an orange outside and then like a white inside and it's just this it's orange cream essentially together okay. so and a, frozen yeah, popsicle. a popsicle like a hard candy or the ice cream yes okay cool yeah for it. so it's a really good a really good like summertime treat that we would have around here a lot um you know off the ice cream truck or something yeah okay so. Are there ice cream trucks in Sweden? Oh yeah, good question. Okay. Oh, yeah. good. I'm but glad that we that... have the actually. They sell in boxes. They, there's uh, been okay. ones around the same company since the 80s that go around, and they have like a, a, you know the bell, that uh, mm-hmm. a tune, and they go around selling. And so they sell to households. So that you buy a box of whatever uh, ice creams you want. Hmm. That's interesting. So they yeah. don't just do like an individual popsicle. They, no, they, they we actually pop. where I live here, I, there's a, an ice cream company in Gothenburg, uh, and there's a guy who has his own ice cream truck, and he goes around in my neighborhood. So you, you can actually buy one pieces of him as well, and he sells bags of whatever he. It's like, it's just hmm. his business idea. He, he's always yeah. one day ahead of the schedule of the <laughs> of the main truck. So oh, yeah, there you go. He's sliding yeah. in. Amazing. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's great. I love it. All right. So let's let's get back into this little interview here. This is the question we've all been on our seats waiting <laughs> to ask. I, well, I don't know if everybody yeah. has, but I have been. If you listen uh, to our most recent podcast, you have. I've, I've been waiting. Um, so have you ever been to the Reader Rabbit theme park zoo attraction? No, um, I have not. <laughs> Okay. Do you know anything about it? Can you inform me of anything? As no, as- I just listened to this episode literally five minutes before we started uh, recording, <laughs> and I heard it, and I was like, "Shit!" My cousins <laughs> live in Eskilstuna, so I could I could get that information, but I don't have the time to to ask them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but I know of the park, and uh-huh. I've never heard of the Reed Rabbit called. Uh, actually, it's called Kalikunskop, which is Charlie knowledge in loose translation okay. um i know the park and they're famous for having white tigers oh um and a lot of animal abuse as of lately oh, <laughs> because, oh, you know, no. two parks and it's a bit dodgy sometimes yeah um but i've never no i'm sorry <laughs> i can't talk about that <laughs> that's fine than, i know we're gonna have its existence be like an ongoing thing until we have the answers. So once you talk to your cousin, relay it to me. And then on the following podcast after this one, <laughs> I'll bring up that information again. And hopefully we can get closer to an understanding of what this thing is. I just yeah. want to know. I just want to know. I see. I mean, they live there and he has kids uh, in all different ages. So he must have been there with them. So all I'll, right. I'll, he'll probably be able to answer me. We're one step closer to knowing this knowledge. Sure. Short of me literally flying on a plane to swing it <laughs> into the Rita Rabbit attraction. Nobody would know what you're talking about either. <laughs> Maybe like close down in 88 or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right? No, don't say that. Ah, we have uh, hopes and dreams, Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we man. will find this out. This is going to be the 2021 resolution for Precisely Podcast. Uh, <laughs> We're going to figure this thing out. <laughs> Yeah, we'll we'll start a new podcast about this. Actually, <laughs> it's like one of those ones where they're like, it's like one of those like true crime narrated yeah, podcasts, exactly. but like the music in the background and like the soft talking. But there's yeah. just like a lot of information, and it's just like, well, we're going down the rabbit hole. The yeah. rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Is that a light a cigarette. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just oh, yeah. kidding. Oh, sorry. I don't <laughs> smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm just <laughs> being one of those really cool guys yeah. that are talking. Yeah. I was going to say, your, your smoke isn't going to bother me from six hours. <laughs> <laughs> True that. So this is something I've always wanted to ask you. <laughs> you have some of the most beautiful and well-curated photos I see on Instagram. And I'm always like, that's a Mac and re- retro gamer shot. Do you use a digital camera or do you just use your phone? Thank you very much. Um, I use, um, I try to, uh, I, I can use my phone and, but I try to use my, uh, I have a, a, a compact camera, a point and shoot. Okay. But it, uh, a really high end co- uh, point and shoot. It's uh, called like a it. Fuji oh, okay. X100F. Oh, Ooh. so uh, and I bought that because I, I've, I've been dabbling in photography at work. I work uh, in marketing, so sometimes I need to shoot, and sometimes I I, I worked as a graphic designer for eight years. I did a lot oh, of cool. shoots for magazines and so on. Uh, I did product product photography and so on. Not like I'm not a super pro photographer, but I, I've, you know you've done it enough to to know the basics absolutely Uh, and your lighting techniques are great like just the aesthetic that you have in your photos like the color palette everything i'm just like yeah you know what you're doing you know thank you (laughs) Uh, so so i got a camera uh, a couple of years ago i got a a, a pentax q which is the smallest dslr and and that's ever Mm -hmm. made and I immediately got that thing called gas gear acquisition syndrome. And you need to buy more lenses. You need mm-hmm. to buy accessories and stuff like that. And it's just escalating. 
It basically is <laughs> just like retro game collection, but, I didn't but in know camera that, gear. Terminology for that gas. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And the thing is, when you have all that stuff, and then you're going to go out and shoot. And then, okay, so what should I bring? Uh, I, I want to bring this and I want to bring that. And how do I carry all this shit? Uh huh. So mm-hmm. even if it, I had the smallest uh, DSLR in, in the world, it's still a lot of shit to carry around. Yeah, absolutely. So I sold that one. Uh, <laughs> and sort of, I got tired of photography for a while. So uh, yeah. about a year later, I, I started reading about the X100 from Fuji. It got really good reviews, and it's got a fixed lens. Lens. Mm-hmm. So basically, you're you're you you got this twenty three miller. It's a thirty five millimeter equivalent for a full frame. If you know what I'm talking about, yes, and, I do. And that's what you have, but you also have all manual settings. You can set the aperture, you set the time, the ISO with manual dials. Really, you can have wear gloves and in the winter and do this yeah. so it's really hands on you need you know back to the basics of photography yeah, so I know what you're doing yeah but it's also fully digital so you can just point and shoot and be happy with it and it'll take okay. amazing photos but if you know what you you want to achieve you can you can really do it as well um, so I, I bought it and I, I, I've been trying to I'm trying to use it because I want to use it and yes I have another account for ph- photography, uh, uh, and I did like one of these challenges, one new photo a day last year. Sorry, I'm just trying not to burp too much because drinking a lot of beer and making noises. Um, and um, after the 30 days of taking a photo each day and trying to reinvent myself every single day, I got kind of bored. So yeah. I, I, got out of photography for a while and then I started taking photos for Instagram and I usually use my iPhone, just put up the things you want to shoot and so on. Yeah. And I edit them in Lightroom on my mobile. And then I started thinking that maybe I should use my better camera. And Mm -hmm. so I now try to force myself to use that one camera and also, that makes, that makes my photography, I need to think more about what I'm shooting and so on because it's just not a snapshot. It's I set it up and, I, well, I try to make it as beautiful as I can. Now it's so fucking dark in Sweden, so <laughs> it's not fun to shoot But right now. But <laughs> especially we have, we have overcast October, November, December. There's like mm. one day when the sun was out in December. Oh, so wow. that sucks in photography terms. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Just sucks in general. <laughs> yeah, and when the sun sets or not, at it's three, like, oh yeah, it, great. There you go, <laughs> sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want direct sunlight, but you want at least some sort of light. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um yeah, I try to I use that one, the Fuji X one hundred F. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. Um it definitely shows like your your photos are outstanding. And I love seeing them every day because you oh, have been you. posting. Yeah, you've been posting almost every day, I want to say. And yeah, I've, I've sort of in a, hit a slump now because I'm running out of ideas and, and that something is really bothering me right now. So, But we had snow the other day, so now it's, uh, it's a completely different landscape. So I, I was out today in the forest uh, just hanging out. Uh, I didn't bring right. a camera or anything, but to... Now it's, it's the opportunity is back now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And honestly, just take more photos of the Vectrex and different angles. I would love to see more stuff about it. So, <laughs> I will. You should yeah. see the backside of it. Ooh. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm in my kiosk room right now and, and I'm just looking at all the like little things that I have and thinking about your 35 millimeter fixed lens that really like, so there's no zoom in exactly. it. No. So you have to frame everything perfectly. So that means you physically have to either get closer or farther away from things. Exactly. And it forces you to get the proper picture. And I almost want to put my fixed lens on my Canon to be forced to do that. Yeah. And usually with a fixed lens, you have a better, uh, f- a lower F stop and that's what you call it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, and and uh, they're usually sharper as well. So yeah, I'm I'm already seeing my next photo. So this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, go go fix yeah. my friend. Yep, yep. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for inspiring me with that. Excellent. So besides your photos, how has Instagram influenced you in your gaming and collecting endeavors? Uh, financially in a bad place. No, (laughs) (laughs) you get inspired to, to want to try and buy so many games. I see so many beautiful pictures every day Mm -hmm. uh, and inspiring posts. And even those, those people, those people that just take a snapshot of their screen. I mean, Oh, this game, I've never played this game. And they, there's usually you read the description and you say, okay, it's blah, blah, blah. And and I've never heard about this one. Cause for a long time, I, I had a Commodore 64 as a kid. And, and that one I've kept and I still have it. Oh, that's uh, but awesome. I never had the NES. I never had the Super NES. I never had the Master System, the Genesis or the Mega Drive. Uh, I, I never had the Amiga 500 and so on. And basically, I got a PC uh, in the mm-hmm. early early 90s. And so from there on, I played Wolfenstein and so on. And that that was how I gamed. And I game. I sort of I tried everything else as friends, of course. But I'm not reliving my childhood. I'm I'm trying to try out stuff I never tried before. Yeah. And I also <laughs> forgot the question. Um, can you help? How me has please? Instagram influenced you in your gaming? Yes, and, and yeah, and and that's I I never. I'm not trying to live relive things here. I'm I'm ex, ex, exploring retro gaming. That that I missed. Yeah, so I, I, I missed a lot. I love that outlook. That's yeah, such a that different too. outlook than everybody else. I love that. Yeah, that's so cool. And I agree with you. I mean, when you were talking about like our first question, you know, and you brought up Advance Wars and rapidly like Google searching what are the best games for Game Boy Advance, you know, like that brought me back thinking when I first got that system and I'm like, I want to start collecting for this. What is the best of this? What's the best RPGs? What's the best shooters? You know, and just that experience. Now I feel like I almost know everything, but I obviously don't. But like when when someone says a game, I recognize that game that I can Mm -hmm. talk about it. But I love just researching and learning more. And I love seeing people's posts where they do surprise me with something that I'm not you know, knowledgeable about in any sense. Like I love learning new things. So yeah. Yeah. And Uh, there's so much to experience. I mean, for me, I, I had a, I didn't have the opportunity to play Mega Man every day. My friends had it. So I played it and you, you play it for a couple of minutes and you die and you know, there's someone else need to play and they you Mm -hmm. sit watching them for play for one hour and then they, Oh, you want to go out, right? Okay. So you go out, uh, those kind of games takes time to learn, <laughs> which I've Absolutely. learned now. I've, I've got the Rockman series for my uh, twin Famicom. Nice. Uh, and I just love it. The music is so insanely good mm-hmm. on Rockman 2. I'm, I'm trying to play it in order. I don't have Rockman 1 yet, but I have 3, 4, 5. Okay. Maybe 6, I don't know. Um, their <laughs> Famicom games are cheap as well, so you don't pay much for those. Yeah. Uh, or, and or do you just, need to know Japanese for a game like that either? You know? No, exactly. I have a Zelda on on a disc on disket oh, nice. for the Twin Famicom, uh, and that's a bit tricky to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that the translated version gives you much help in that sense, but yeah. <laughs> it's a tricky game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need a guidebook or something. Yeah. <laughs> Power, yeah, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> uh, do you have any gaming or collecting goals for 2021? Um, no, uh, I don't think so. Um, I just try to to not buy too much stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's a good goal to have. Yeah, but but also try to. F- the thing I need, I need to play more of the games I have. Yes. 
um, I think we all have that problem. Yes. Um, but also, we just always want the next thing. thing. Yeah. The other day, you know? I bought the, you know, the Tobu Tobu Girl for the Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. The, the new produced uh, arcade platformer. I bought that when it uh, back the the uh, who, what you call it Kickstarter, um, mm-hmm. and I got it maybe last summer, and I played mm-hmm. it, and it was hard and eh, didn't really. It's fun, it sounds good, and it's amazing, but it was hard, and so I played it for a couple of hours, and I eventually beat the first stage. Oh wow! Um, and then it sort of just landed on my shelf, and I haven't played it since. And then oh, yeah. I started playing it a couple of days ago, and I'm obsessed now. And I've, I've made, I'm making progress in that. I mean, yeah. Sometimes you just gotta let things sit for a while and play it when you when you feel right, like it. Absolutely. Um, but also, there's so many games I want. I, I I mean, see post as I said every day. Oh, I don't get that one. I need to. I need to try that. I need to try that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't really like RPGs, but the ones you're posting, Bo and uh, EC, EC PC, he's yep. uh, yeah, that Mana Secret of Mana. Ah, uh, so good. That's yeah. a that, I, that's I actually to try a really. That. You can play yeah. that with three controllers, and I have two daughters. Exactly, and I, that would be perfect for us to experience perfect. together. Yes, <laughs> I've, and I've it's done, such a fun game to play with multiplayer. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, and I, I'm really curious to play that because it's so, but it's, I mean, what do you call it? $80 for a loose cart? Yeah, mm-hmm. I believe so, it. Mm-hmm, yeah. But, um, I've, I've played uh, Zelda, the handheld Zeldas on the 3DS since the uh, GBA for mm-hmm. my girls as a bedtime story. <laughs> a really? Lazy, lazy parent scene. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm in my. So game. Watch, you play it. Yeah, I play it, and they watch, and I tell them the story. That's so cute. I love, oh, that. I love that. Yeah, oh, and I, I read that. to them as well, because just to be, yeah, <laughs> to, be, to be on the record with, I actually do read <laughs> to my daughters. But sometimes we we just chill out and play Zelda. And that's uh, it, great. Yeah, it's really a good time together. We sit in bed, and it's just relaxing, and then they just doze off. You know, they. Yeah. Turn you turn around and just and then yeah <laughs> that would be so cool if if Nintendo ever released a lot of like some of these classic games as children's storybooks to introduce like Zelda would be such a good children's oh storybook yeah. and well, then good thing that, that Mr Miyamoto listens to our podcast oh, because he my idea <laughs> too. <laughs> so uh, I'll be taking credit. I'll be taking eighty percent of the profit. Yeah, and- right. <laughs> Instead, they're going to sue you once they hear this and be like, "Yeah, we've already made this." <laughs> oh no! You owe us money. <laughs> no. Damn it! No, but that'd be so cool because that I, I be think cool. that would translate so well to a children's story. Especially and I think yeah, nowadays, I mean, all of them are all of them are so heavily story based, and I think. That's why Mario and Zelda and uh, and all those there, there's a story there, even if yeah. it, it's not told in the game in that sense. In Super Mario, there's a story there, and it's very simple, but it's there, and, yeah. and you get to make up your own imagination about everything. So, yeah, it's Super- it's great material. Yeah, I love that. Would be. I love it. Let's, I would love it. Wait, wait, everybody- wait. Everybody start playing games to put their children to sleep in 2021. Yeah, <laughs> bright lights aren't the best thing I can say. <laughs> yeah, they'll be fine. Yeah. I would Flip love glasses. A, fine. I would love a story about the enemy and Kirby Ooh. and get sucked up by Kirby and how he experiences life after that. Inside Kirby? Okay. After he had his powers stolen. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. what happens? What know. actually does happen? Tossed out as a shell of a star. <laughs> <laughs> Naked and afraid. Oh my exactly. gosh. Exactly. Absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> the definition of it. Right. So, Marcus, what's a holy grail item that you've always wanted? 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking about maybe this question will come up and what will I answer? Because now I have a Vectrex, I have a PC Engine, I have a twin Famicom. I have yeah. all these oddballs things. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the top of my head, I Neo Geo. But ah. that's so expensive to just the games are insanely priced. Yeah. Right. Um, and maybe oh, what was the other thing I was thinking about? Um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be silent on a podcast. No, you're fine. Atari Lynx. I'm just going to start naming off things. Yeah, not the Atari Lynx, uh, okay. but I want Jaguar. that one as well. And not the Jaguar. Yeah, I, I, I thank you for reminding me. It was sort of related to what I answered on your post on the the uh, educational games. Titan yeah. of the Dead for the Dreamcast. Oh yeah, uh, I don't have a Dreamcast. I don't have any, but I love I, I love to type. I actually work as a copywriter, so that's mm-hmm. okay. how I make a living. I type things. Nice. So I, I'm I'm pretty fast, and also. I think I started learning that when back in the days when you call up BBSs. Mm-hmm. You, you don't remember this because you weren't born <laughs> in '93 no. when, when you had a dial-up uh, connection on 2,400 2, boards, and <laughs> oh. you had NC graphics slowly loading each line, line by line. <laughs> and, um, you, there were you you could chat with the system operator or sysop. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the guy who owned the, the BBS and there were also games you could play and some of those games were typing games where you had to type in the correct letter falling down or oh, whatever cool. so I, I got pretty fluent pretty early on on the keyboard um, and, and also I love zombie shooting games so that's sort of yeah. like the perfect combination typing of the dead you should definitely get a Dreamcast they yeah. are one of my favorite systems. Like, I should get a modern one with that. I don't have to buy the games though. Yeah, get or, one that's yeah that's modded with the SD card. Um, and then that way you could just add games that you want. I I know the card that I have in mind that's modded is 128 gigabytes, and I have like 100 games on it. Yeah, that seems more than enough. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because what I I think they are pretty fragile. The the boxes for them as well, aren't they? The a little bit. Tree, yeah. yeah. But uh, the... definitely definitely a good system to get, and cheaper than a Neo Geo for sure. <laughs> yeah, everything is cheaper than a Neo Geo. Yeah, that's true. And if you really want to, not that we promote this, but the Dreamcast, one of the big reasons why it failed is that you could just make copies of the games and put them on CDR. Right. Okay. So, so that's uh, an interesting. <laughs> so you could just get the console and find the ROM. Okay. Just, just download the CDs. I didn't know that. Thanks for mm-hmm. sharing that piece of information that I won't abuse in any kind. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's fine. They're not really a company anymore. I guess they are, but they're not making I guess, I think. <laughs> So, being a listener of Precisely, what's something you would like to see us do in 2021? Oh, um, an Advance for Special. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I am actually down for that. That is fine. One of the <laughs> episodes I enjoyed the most was when you were talking about selling games and buying and, and thrifting and so on, and how you as, I mean... Both of you have more. I buy games, and I don't. I sell sometimes when I've bought a game that I don't like. But you get you guys sort of make a profit from this, and and sort of, and you Kelly have. I mean, this is your way to make a living, and you Bo, you do it sort of quite a lot as well. If I I, quite a lot as a sort of like a second job, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, And I really enjoyed hearing. Yeah, that was a re- really good and informative way to, for me to to learn about the how you do and how you think. And for me, as I said, I don't have the time to go around and I don't have the energy to sit there and find out what the good price is and when to buy. And I just want to, okay, do I, can I afford this? Is, yeah. this? is this a good price? Just checking generally what, what, are the, what are they going for on eBay and so on. And then 
if I want it, I'll buy it. And if I can't afford it at that, I mean, you have to put a, a budget for this. You can't just buy everything, even if you have money. I mean, you have to buy other stuff as well. Absolutely. Um, so that was informative and uh, really made me, because I think I've, I've sort of shunned how people like you are doing business did before knowing how you were thinking. And I sort of had more respect for, for that sort of, I mean, you do the legwork. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I pay not exactly. to do that. So yeah, that's why, yeah. that's why I have to pay a bit extra. Yeah. Yeah. It oh. makes sense. Well, I appreciate you even mentioning that other episode because I had a lot of fun doing that too. Cause that was yeah. just like, a passion episode where you don't have to do research or anything. Um, it's just talking about what we do, you know, for a living. And uh, yeah, yeah it, it's fun. It's fun buying and selling because you can always just keep upgrading what you already have or getting more stuff that you want by selling the stuff that you don't want, you know, or that you've grown out of or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the the light gun episode was good. So maybe not an advanced wars episode, but maybe a tactical. What do you call it? Tactical RPG. Oh, it's not. It's not very not much. Not an RPG. So <laughs> yeah, it's just like fighting. A first person uh, shooter. Like tactical games. Okay, yeah. like a first person shooter game. No, 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 oh. no, no, no. Advanced wars, like. Oh, like oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought he. So oh, maybe I Fire Emblem and, and yeah. Tactics Ogre and whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we were we were actually contemplating on bringing back the Happy Hour podcast where we like dive deep into one specific game, and I think we're going to start that back up again. Yeah, that's worse. Do it. That's <laughs> right. right. Yeah, and maybe we'll have you back on for that one too. Mm. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be glad I can't talk anymore. I have two beers and uh, a bit nervous. <laughs> well, hey man, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Like you did great. So I'm yeah. glad, I'm thank glad you, you came much. on and, and you didn't seem nervous at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you're fine. Yeah. It was a great conversation. I definitely learned a, a lot of stuff. It's great to hear from somebody else who's not in America doing the same hobby that we are what things are like and how you do on your day to day, what you like, what you do with your your collection and stuff. It's super cool to, to learn about all that kind of stuff. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I enjoyed very much talking to you as well. And as you said, this is, this is one of the greatest things about the retro gaming community. We have so much in common. Yeah. We live worlds apart. I mean, right. But it's still, we we have this you share the same passion and it's so relatable. Yeah. And, it really so, is. and fun to just talk to people about this is um yeah, I love it. I, I've I've had a great time. Awesome uh, man. Well thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm honored. You know, and the the only thing that we didn't learn is this goddamn Rita Rabbit attraction. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to worry. Yeah. <laughs> Episode 67. I promise you, I will get you information. All right. (laughs) Might take a while, but I'll get it. That's fine. Uh, That's funny. Yeah. um, So, yeah, thank you again, Marcus. Uh, You can find him on Instagram at mkn underscore retro gamer. Um, And then if you like what you heard today, please rate, review, and subscribe us and share this podcast with your friends. You can find merch, other episodes, and beers we drank on our website, precisely.live. You can donate to our Patreon to keep the new episodes coming, and you can follow us on social media for updates and pictures of games and beers that we've talked about and drank at Precisely Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you, guys. We out. We out. Thank you, Marcus. Hey, Dolph.